Hi everyone. Today I am going to teach you all to find the fourth root of an irrational number. Fourth root of an irrational number. Okay. For this, I have taken a question. Hope you will understand it properly. Now let us solve it. Okay. Let's go for it. See, I have taken the number twenty-eight minus sixteen times square root of three. You have to find the fourth root of this number. Fourth root of this number. Hmm? Well, for this, before I solve, start solving these questions, I would love to discuss few basic things about it. Now, what is that actually? Please look at it carefully. Now, suppose, suppose I have to find the fourth root of number like n, something like n, and you can go like this. Can we break it like uh, square root of square root of n? Yes, we can go. First, we can find the square root of that number, and once you get the answer, again you find the square root of the number, and you will get the answer. Okay. The same ideology I'm going to use it over here. Clear? Let's go for it. Now see, see, I'm writing it as square root of square root of twenty-eight minus sixteen root three. Okay, our first job over here is to find the square root of twenty-eight minus sixteen root three. Now tell me one thing: How can we find its square root? We have an irrational number over here, and we need to find the square root. Okay, that means I can convert this number as a perfect square of any irrational number. Okay, let us do it. Now see, square root of square root of twenty-eight minus this sixteen. I am breaking it like two times eight times square root of three. Just see me. Now see, this is twenty-eight minus. I am going to. Convert this as square root of sixty-four. Now see, this is two times square root of sixty-four into square root of three. Clear? Next, this is square root of square root of twenty-eight minus. Now I am going to take square root of sixty-four into square root of sixty-three under same square root. So it will look like. Two times sixty-four into three. Now, why I am doing it? You will understand now. Now see, again, square root of square root of twenty-eight minus. Now see, two times. Oops. Okay. Over here, sixty-four. I am going to break sixty-four as sixteen fours are sixty-four, and I'm going to write over here 16 into 4, but I'm going to multiply that 4 by 3. That becomes 12. Now, why I am doing it like this? The reason is that when I add up these two numbers, I'll get the sum 28. That means inside the square root, you have to break into two factors in such a way that it sums up to get this number. Okay. Okay. Now, square root of square root of this twenty-eight. Now I can write as sixteen plus twelve times two times square root of sixteen and two. I hope it is clear to you over here. Now, come over here. Okay. Again, square root of square root of. Can I write? This sixteen as like this square root of sixteen whole square, hmm? and I have four over here twelve. I can also write this as square root of twelve whole square. Now I can break this as square root of sixteen into square root of twelve. Okay. 
Now, does it look like a square plus b square minus twice ab? Huh? It looks like that. Okay, that means I can write it as a minus b square. Okay, now, now I can remove this square root. So we are free from the first square root. Hmm? But we are still inside one more square root. We have to get rid of this square root too. Okay, now dear, look, this is equal to 4. Square root of 16 means 4. And this is equal to like square root 12 means 2 times root 3. Okay, this is 2 times square root of 3. Okay, let's work. See, this time I'm going to write 2. Can I write like this square root of 3 into 1 inside the square root? Yes. Now, what is the motive behind it? The same ideology what I have done over here, right? 16 plus 12 equal to 28. The same thing. 3 plus 1 equal to 4. Yeah. Next. Now this is, can I can break it like 3 plus 1 minus 2 times square root of 3 into square root of 1. Now this I can write. This I can write square root of 3 whole square. And 1 can be also written as 1 square root of 1 whole square. I'm writing it. Okay. Somebody can write simple 1 whole square. That will also do. Minus 2 times square root of 3 square root of 1. Well, now we will look at once again have a square plus b square minus twice a b. That means I can convert into perfect square. So I got over here square root of square root of 3 minus square root of 1 whole square. Now, you are removing square root of the free from square root you can call it. Okay? So, you got square root of 3 minus square root of 1 and this square root of 3 since 3 is not a perfect square number, so I am going to write it as square root of 3 itself. And 1 is a perfect square number, so I can write over here 1. So our answer is square root of 3 minus 1. Okay. But I want to share something to you all. Therefore, what we got actually? We got uh, 4th root of 28 minus 16 times root 3 is equal to square root of 3 minus 1. This is our answer. Well, just come over here. Come over here. Oh, sorry. This area, this area, and this area. Somebody might be thinking, why sir has not written square root of 12 minus square root of 16? The reason behind is that, you know that 12 is less than 16. So square root of 12 will be also less than square root of 16. That when I subtract square root of 16 from square root of 12, you will get negative number. And you can't find the square root of a negative number. Hmm? So, be aware of such work. So, it's better to write square root of 16 minus square root of 12 because you will get a positive number and you can get the answer. At least, real answer will get it. Okay. So, I have done it like this. Same way over here. I have written square root of 1 minus square root of 3. I have written square root of 3 minus square root of 1. Same ideology. Okay. I hope it is clear to you all and you can solve such problems in such fashions. Okay, students? Thank you very much.